Mora conducts physician-led support groups, helping people live healthier, happier lives, free from chronic diseases like diabetes, hypertension, and obesity. And on our podcast, Health and Mora with Dr. Lori Marbus, we bring to you nutrition and lifestyle medicine experts and extraordinary guests to empower and inspire you with their knowledge and stories of plant-based lifestyle so that you can be your healthiest self. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Dr. Lori Marvis, and today I'm very excited to welcome a guest who has a very inspiring story, Zainab El Shami. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me and having me to spread the message of whole food plant based power. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, be ready for an energetic interview. I've, I've already, I've already been quite. Uh, excited about it, just speaking to her beforehand. So, um, well, first of all, thank you for joining us. And, you know, I love to get to kind of the beginning, the middle and where you are now, because it's certainly not an end, but it's a, it's a journey. Uh, but you have a really, I'd say a common story. Can you kind of just walk us back to you were healthy until when, and then maybe we'll kind of go from there. Okay, sure. I can tell you, I was born in the 60s, and by the age of five, I was already overweight. I was one of the heavy girls in every class all the way through high school. I started, you know, yo-yo dieting at the age of 15, trying anything, starving, liquid diets. Your parents would push you or a relative or someone would say, try this one, try this diet, try this diet. I tried everything. And I think by about the age 22, 23, I lost like 70 pounds, kept it off for a couple of years, but then I got married had kids and it all came back and just, you know, just flooded, came back. And when I was pregnant with both of my children, uh, I was 25 and 28 when I had my children, I had gestational diabetes during both pregnancies. Now the first pregnancy, they caught it right away when you're about four or five months. And I controlled it the, all the way through my pregnancy with just diet alone. They put me on a really strict diet, discussing what to eat. I was taking my blood sugars, letting the doctor know. And so we controlled it. When I had the second one, it just couldn't, I couldn't control it with the diet at all. And they told me you're older. And of, of course I was also heavier. I was heavier than I was at the time when I had my first child. So um, for the last four months, I had to go on insulin. I had to go into the hospital, teach you how to do it. And it's scary. It's a scary thing. Cause it's not just you now, you know it's not just you, it's the baby. And they tell you and you're reading all this stuff about, oh, the baby's gonna be born too big and all these problems. And it's just really scary, but it's already happening. So I controlled it. And then as soon as you del I delivered the baby blood sugars went right back to normal. But they did tell me as you get older, you know, if you're not changing your lifestyle if you're not losing weight you might end up with diabetes. And I thought, well, okay, that's, that's later. I mean, you know, I'm just one of those people. It's like, I'm going to worry now about something's going to happen later. No. But um, then when I was 30, me and my family, we moved abroad and we lived abroad for, I lived there for 33, three decades. So I lived there a long time. Wow. Where did you move and to? We moved to Egypt. My husband was Egyptian and we moved to Egypt and I raised my kids there and just life was busy and you know how it gets. I'm, I'm in my thirties, but I was struggling pretty much a long time, 10, 15 years with IBS. I just had mm. terrible IBS, just medicines couldn't control it. No doctors ever talked to me, never one time about food, never could you, anything. Could you tell us a little bit about like the diet in Egypt though? Because I mean, granted, we mm -hmm. understand the American standard American diet that you yeah. were consuming. What was different um, in Egypt or was it different? Oh yeah. I mean, it was more different, not just the difference of the food that we eat. I mean, it was, but also like the timetable of your food, because in Egypt, people are more, you eat a breakfast later in the day. And then everyone has like a lunch because people come home. Like it's really a hot country. People will come home and most people are having their lunch, their main big meal anywhere from three o'clock to six o'clock at night. But then a lot of children and people will go out and do a second job in the evening when it's cooler and women will go out and shop and everyone walks and things like this, kids go to tutors and then people come home and they'll eat like their meat, like their dinner, you call it dinner mm. at like 11 or one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, oh a really, really, wow. really, really late. And so the diet is not that, the diet is a lot of oil, a lot of salt, um, a lot of fried food, a lot of fried food, but mm. it, it's not, but it's more home cooking. Then like American, everything is fast food. You run out and you get it. Although I'm talking about, you know, this was in the, this was before too in the, in the nineties. So it's changed a little bit, but not really. But mm -hmm. anyway, um, I just went ahead and lived my life. And by the time I was 40, I was 
I went to a doctor's appointment because I, I kind of figured I had diabetes. I, you know, going to the bathroom all the time and I had neuropathy in my feet. That was my number one problem, neuropathy of nerve damage in my feet. Wow. And when I went, my A1C was 8.5 already. Mm. And so my first appointment, you know, like every, it's just, he's a specialist in our city, diabetic specialist. I left with three medications. He wanted to put me on insulin immediately. I said, no, no, no. I'm, I, I just, I was afraid of insulin, taking shots. I'd done it when I was pregnant, didn't like it. And I said, no, I'm just going to try it this way. And what about diet? He said, huh, that's not going to help. You really need medication. He just was not one of these. He just wouldn't even listen to diet. He wouldn't even talk about it. Just gave you pamphlets. And he spoke English. But English is perfect. In, in Egypt and all over the world, any doctor, they speak English. They have to because it's just, that's the board. So you take it in all the colleges. So his English was perfect with me. And he handed me pamphlets and handouts which basically went by the American standard of the American Diabetic Association, the diet that they recommend, right? Keep the low, low fat, like low fat yogurt, low fat cheeses, you know, everything is low fat, but you're still eating, make sure you have protein at every meal, turkey, chicken, eggs, every meal and stuff like this. So I was following it. I was doing it. I was on medications. Um, I left with three medications and two um, like vitamins, like he, he was a big proponent of you need a multivitamin and this vitamin is a B complex for your neuropathy. So I left and I lived like that for about five more years on all these medications. I still had IBS. I was on medication all the time. You know, you can't really do much. You can't travel. You, you just, you can't go out of your house. You have to make sure I'm not eating outside because I might have to have diarrhea. And it's just, it's just, IBS is just mm -hmm. terrible. I don't, I didn't know what to do except popping pills all the time. They were supposed to help me control it. And it didn't. So about five years later, uh, my numbers were still high. My A1C was still high. It never really went down. I had my own blood glucose monitor, of course, at home. I wasn't really very faithful in taking it because I just popped the pills and, you know, lived my life. And what was about your five, A1C in the beginning? Sorry, if you. Sorry my A1C not. was about 8.5. And then okay. during those years, you know, you'd go test it all the time. It went down to a seven and then it'd go back up to a nine. And, and in the end, as I'll get to it, it went up to 11 was the highest it ever went. Wow. But yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so um, when I went back to them about five years later, I'm still taking all the medicines, but now of course my numbers aren't changing. He said, you know what, let's give you a different medicine too. So now I'm taking three different medicines, one in the morning with breakfast, something different at lunch and something different at night when you sleep. And it's like, but nothing's controlling it. Why is that? And so I'm somebody that I kind of did more investigation on my own. I started, let me read some stuff. And now the internet was more popular and I'd read a book or someone said, oh, here's a good book, you know, from this famous trainer. And he's like telling you how to control diabetes. I'm like, let me read it. So you read it and you take these tidbits and you take things. And I was on the American Diabetic Association. I got on their website and I was taking down, you know, recipes and, oh, you got to measure the food. Maybe that's my problem. So then you started measuring everything, weighing everything, counting everything. It's not a way to live. It's miserable. I mean, it's just miserable. I mean, you know, you just, how do you weigh how much rice and how much bread and the, you can't do it. It's really, really a difficult way to live and it's not fun and you don't enjoy yourself. And so when I went back, I got on another medication and then I also went on SSRI for depression. It was for depression and for the pain I was still having with neuropathy, which wasn't going away, which just really plays on your mind. You know, Dr. Lori, it just, mm -hmm. your mind is like, I'm doing everything they told me to do. Why is nothing changing? Nothing, right. nothing at all. And then um, someone was talking about vegetarianism and veganism. And I thought, okay, let me see. So I went vegetarian, veganism. I, I did it. It was okay for me because I little by little started to like cut out some hard cheeses and things that I found. Let me cut this out. And it, it kind of calmed down my IBS. So then I started associating a little bit, things like this. Well, then I went and I became a vegan and I thought, that's okay. I can go without meat. It's not my favorite thing anyway. I can go without meat and chicken and all this stuff. But I was using a ton of olive oil and I was so proud of myself. I was telling my friends, you know what? I'm just making my own ice cream because I'm an ice cream lover. Just love it. I'm making my own ice cream. I'm just using coconut milk. Mm. <laughs> and none did I know. Totally saturated fat. It's just mm. full of saturated fat. So that's when I went back to the doctor for one appointment before an, uh, I went to get my A1C. Then you had to stop at your doctor with your lab result. And it was an 11. And he just looked at me and said, what are you doing? He's like, you know, how did this change so drastically? And I told him what I did. He said, oh, I told you, it doesn't have anything to do with food. We're going to have to put you on insulin. That's the only thing to do for you. You're going to have to be on it the rest of your life. And in my mind, I'm like, 
oh, I just can't do that. I just, I was so afraid. And I'm like, I don't know. I said, let me think about it. Well, then I went home and a lot of things were happening in my life. When I turned 50, a lot of things started happening for me, just personal and like this journey of I'm 50 now. I've been on the planet for, you know, five decades, but I can't live like this for five more or however many I get. Mm-hmm. I'm miserable. I'm unhappy. I'm obese. I'm, I'm just, you know, not feeling great. A lot of complications with diabetes, a lot of like fluid retention in my legs. I had cellulitis a lot. I had a couple of bouts of cellulitis, really terrible. A lot of antibiotics that then brought flares up of IBS that I couldn't control, right? And I was one of the people who, because I didn't have um, a lot of the nerve sensations were gone in my feet, but I was also carrying 275 pounds. I would go for walks, try to be active, try to do these things. And I would get, you know, the toe pads under your toes, the toe, mm-hmm. toe pads, they would get like blisters. Well, my yeah. blisters would get infected, would bleed, would ooze and pus for like six months. Yeah. Nothing could control them. And then the doctor, antibiotics. And it's mm-hmm. like, you do what the doctor says and you know what the antibiotics are. They're supposed to help me, but you don't realize what it's doing to our gut. We just don't mm-hmm. get it. And then the IBS was there. I was sick all the time, nauseous, diarrhea, constipate. It was terrible, just one by one. And you, I couldn't figure it out. I was really frustrated. And that's the other part of that comes with this going through the medical mill or the pharmacy mill, whatever you want to call it. It's a frustration. And that leads to depression. And it leads to you just feel like I'm just a failure. I can't do it. I see all these other people. They seem to do it. And then one day, miraculously, I call it a miracle. It's a miracle to me. I got on my email and I had an email from these amazing people that I know you know them, Dr. Cyrus Kambada mm-hmm. and Robbie Barbero, nice who now time. have mastering diabetes. This was before that came around. This was in 2017. I just got an email that said, hey, come to this summit, come to the summit for 10 days, listen to all these incredible doctors and nutritionists and scientists who will tell you how to reverse, reverse diabetes. And I said, what? I'm in shock. I'm like, I've never heard this word. I've never read it in diabetic magazines. I've never seen it anywhere. Reverse. What do they mean by reverse? Is that really how that? Then I thought, this is just nonsense. They're going to sell me some program that costs thousands of dollars or they're gonna have all kinds of medication. I I was like, okay, let me see. And I sat down faithfully, I watched every day and I just kept seeing these incredible, gorgeous people. Everyone was so healthy, raising their children this way. They had their own personal story, but then they also had the science and the research. And I'm like, wow, well, what do I have to do? Mm -hmm. It was so simple. It was just so simple, just talking about food, whole foods, get away from processed food. And then the whole thing because of diabetes, right? All the different, we have so many different illnesses in the, in the world, but, and plant-based um, eating and being healthier will help a lot of diseases, but diabetes is particular because it's all about the fat in your diet. It's all about the fat. And here I was loading myself, olive oil is the healthiest Every day I eat olive oil, every single day, right? Mm. Or low fat cheeses. Every day you're loading your body with all these oils. So then I thought, okay, wow. And I'm taking a ton of notes and I'm writing all these doctors' names down so I can search who they are. And they're talking about their life and what they're doing. I'm like, let me give it a try. Let me try. And so I just immediately did. I just immediately, as soon as it was done, I just started thinking, okay, now what am I going to do? And how am I going to do that? And what about my family? And how am I cooking for myself and cooking for them? Well, and then I discussed it with them and they're like, I can't live without meat. Uh, What are you talking about? And I'm like, well, I'm going to do it. So I live for a little bit of time. It was really difficult because it's cooking two different things or my food's over here and yours is over here. And I'm somebody, I always made my own, like um, made my own cookies and I did my own baking cookies and muffins and all that stuff. And it's all fat, right? Fat and sugar and eggs and stuff. So now I had to figure out, okay, let's just go off that for a while. I just won't even do it. Let me follow what they're telling me to do. And I just implemented it immediately. I had no support, no one around me. I'm in a country, you know, but no one knows. I've never heard of this stuff. And I just started and I thought, let me see. So this is why you're still in Egypt. I'm in Egypt. I did all this in Egypt. So when people, I have people who tell me it's too hard and you can't do it here. The food isn't good enough. I'm like, I did it there. I didn't have any fancy. There was no plant milks. There was no plant wow. yogurts. There was no, and this was in 2017 that I did this. 
there was no, I mean, even going to a store trying to find quinoa or flaxseed was hard. You had to go to like a specific store and order it or a specific store only had it sometimes and you had to stock up because if it was gone, you might not see it for nine months, right? Totally wow. different lifestyle. And so, um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to start no, getting no, a little bit fine. of thunder if you hear it. Yeah, yeah we're having fine. a sun storm here. But yeah, so I started immediately. I was still taking my blood pressure, my, my blood um, sugars all the time, my blood glucose monitor. And I did call my doctor. I didn't go to him, but I called him and I talked to him and I told him, hey, listen, I'm going to try this. And what all the doctors are telling me is I've got to really monitor my blood sugars because I might have to go off the medication because my blood sugars are going to drop. And he's like, well, I don't know. You know, he didn't believe anything. I said, okay, I'm just letting you know. So I'm letting you know. So I went ahead and I started seeing my numbers were dropping. I was feeling, I mean, it's the, it's, it's hard to explain to people because I don't really know if it was the food and the effect of that changing or the fact that I'm changing like the food and the calories. And I'm, you know, I guess the, if you want to call it the reversing the, the diabetes, my blood sugar is getting better. But is it also, I had all these feelings of just sometimes nauseous, a lot of dizziness, a lot of headaches. And I thought, but it's maybe the medicine too, because I'm still mm -hmm. taking medicine because you have to, but then mm -hmm. I'm trying this too, that's dropping all my numbers, my blood sugar, because I was on medicine for, um, I was taking a diuretic because I had high blood pressure. My cholesterol wasn't terrible and never has been a terrible problem for me, but just all these medications that you're taking that we don't even really know what, what their effect they're having, you know, metformin and, you know, sulfurites and all these things for diabetes. So I just began and I was really faithful and I really paid attention and I just kind of stayed at home for a couple of weeks and I just paid attention to my meals and I re really just followed everything they said to do. And I had to start taking myself off medications because my numbers were so low, I didn't need them anymore. And so after a couple of weeks of this, I went to the doctor and I showed him my blood glucose monitor. You know, you can hand it to him and he can look through all your numbers. And I'm like, I was taking medication when they started, but they started dropping. So now I went off this medication and off this one. And he didn't like the fact that I wanted to go off them, but I did. So he took mm -hmm. me off one. He said, okay, let's try that. Because I actually, I can't say all the way off because like, for instance, I had a pill that was like, it was called Emeril, right? And it was like an eight milligram pill. So I just broke it in half and started taking four milligrams, right? And then after that, you, you can go instead of the pharmacy, you're buying four milligram, you can buy a two milligram and a one. So I did that on my own, wow. just using my own judgment and this numbers and just paying attention to the, all the numbers of the blood sugar numbers and how I was feeling. And then other things happened. Like in one month, I thought I haven't taken any pills for IBS for a month, <laughs> nothing, no IBS flares, no, nothing. And I'm like, Hmm, this is very interesting. And then when I went and had, you know, blood pressure and I went and had, had a blood pressure and a cholesterol, they were down. Mm -hmm. And then when I did go back to him, finally, I had an appointment with him. When I went back to him by then I was dropping 10 pounds a month consistently. Wow. I was dropping 10 pounds a month consistently eating until I was stuffed, eating meals that were just, you never feel hungry, not starving yourself, which was new to me because I'd never done that. And I was dropping 10 pounds a month. And I did that for like six months in a row. And when I went back to him for an A1C, my A1C was now 5.6 mm. in six months. Which is and just so, under normal for people. Yeah, who just don't know. under normal. So I just told him when I went back, because by this time I had been off all the medication for just like a couple of weeks or maybe, you know, a month, I'd been off everything, just little by little taking myself down to see what would happen. And my numbers were good at home, my blood glucose monitor. And so now I did an A1C, took the lab, took the test to him. And I said, okay, I said, I'm off any medications for diabetes. I'm not going to do it anymore. And he like, didn't, you know, looked at me like I was crazy. I said, yeah, but look at the numbers. I mean, look, look at my, if my A1C is 5.6, I'm just going to can keep doing this and lose more weight because I've lost 60 pounds, but I still had 60 to go, you know, mm -hmm. to be my normal BMI, what I would, what I would consider what I want. And so he said, okay, but he didn't he didn't really like it or he kind of just washed his hands at me and said, well, you know, you know, you're the one making the choice and I'm telling you it's not good, but I did it. I did it on my own. I did it. I went off everything. My blood tests, even like calcium scores, everything was fine. Everything is normal. Everything is optimal for me, for my age. And it's like, 
this is just, I can't believe it. This is just incredible. I just was, I don't know. I was just kind of floored and all my friends around, even people in my neighborhood, they were asking my husband and my kids, is she okay? Is she sick? Mm -hmm. Because you're losing so much weight so quickly. And they're like, no, she's just, she's doing this and she's changed her way of eating and stuff like this. So then after that, I just really got, you know, I had friends who were having the same problems, friends who were diabetic, who were, you know, and then you're just telling them and quite a few of them, they changed, they switched over. It's not an easy thing to do. I will admit it's not easy. And it has a lot to do. Each single one of us has to do it on our own. Getting coaching, having someone help you, which is what I'm doing now, coaching people, trying to help each person individually find out how are you going to find your own rhythm, your own way to do, to live plant-based, to live a lifestyle medicine way of life, just change all your habits, right? We have to change all of our habits. It's not easy because we've been living this way for so long. It's just common. I mean, I go and I grab chicken and I'm going to have chicken and this and fry it and go outside to eat and fast food and it's your habit. And now you have to switch all those habits. And you'll find that when you switch the habits, you you have to create now a healthy habit to take place of what you were just doing that wasn't giving you good health, that was right. keeping you sick, keeping you on medications, keeping you in a sedentary lifestyle, keeping you how whatever your problem was, because we each have our own individual, you know, challenges uh, with, you know, family lifestyle, whatever your own health challenge is, but I know anyone can do it. I am absolutely determined that any single person, I don't care where you live in the country, in any country in the world, if you switch and you become plant-based, not even 100%, just switch a little bit and see how you feel. People can go off medication. And once you start feeling better, it's like it's your own impetus to change. It's like, if I feel this good, why would I do that again? Why would I go back to eating any of that stuff that I was eating or even the lifestyle, you become more active. Of course, I'm more active now. I'm 120 pounds lighter. You know, <laughs> I can get up in the morning. I get up in the morning and I go for an hour and a half walk. I'm doing yoga. I'm doing, you know, hundred squats a day. It's like, I couldn't do that before. I didn't have the energy. I was ill all the time, you know, uh, knee pain from carrying the weight. It's just so many different things like that that when people look at their life, which is what I do now, working as a health coach, you talk to people and they're giving you this list of all the reasons why they can't or all the, all their problems, like a whole list of problems. People on, you know, I was on seven medications. Right. I'm on none now, nothing. I take a B12. That's it. Wow. Yes. So, how, so total medications lost? I was on seven different medications. Seven. If, you, if you're counting like a couple of different medications for IBS, and then okay. I was also taking two um, like vitamins, like a multivitamin and something else that was supposed to be for neuropathy, for, for, okay. for restoring nerve damage, right? But so altogether, it was like I was putting into my body all these different, because you know, every mm. pill and every vitamin, they have all these fillers and all this other stuff. And you yeah. don't really know what that's doing to your body, what your you know, problems inside your body with it. But yeah, so in altogether. Six, so in six months, you lost 60 pounds. And then how long did it take you to lose the next 60? Yeah, right. Um, I lost the 60 pounds um, and then it slowed down because you know, your body will, it will go into a plateau. My body went into this equilibrium, trying to find its own place. And I just let it, I just kind of, I knew it was coming because I'd read so much about it. And mm -hmm. then I lost like five pounds for the next few months, just five pounds, but that's okay. Cause I wasn't gaining anything back. I was still eating and, you know, active and all these things. And then I just hit this plateau where I stayed at one weight and I stayed there for about four months or five months. And I was reading like, okay, what, why am I not, why is nothing changing? I was trying to figure it out. And then I just told myself, but you're not gaining anything back and you still mm -hmm. feel great and your numbers are still fine. And so I told myself just, you know, just, just be faithful, just, you know, keep on the course you're on. And then I read some more stuff and they talked about like, um, there's different things that you can do to like boost it now to, to, to kind of like throw your body now into a new, pattern where my body's holding at a steady weight, but I also know I need to still lose weight. At this time, I needed to lose like 45 more pounds or so. Mm. And so um, in my religion, we have a month where we fast. Mm. So my month was coming up where we have to, we fast from sun up to sundown. And the so Ramadan? I went ahead, I went ahead and I did that Ramadan. Yeah. I went ahead and I did that. And as I did that, I always lost weight during that time. And I just told myself, okay, go ahead and do that month and you'll lose the weight. Cause I have, you know, most people we lose weight. And then just when it's over, 
continue on with a can maybe lower calories or may, maybe you need to eat less. It's just, it's a, it's a real journey to try to figure out how to be sustainable. And mm -hmm. so I did that, but then at the same time, as soon as Ramadan was over and I had lost, I think 12, 12 pounds or something during Ramadan, I began intermittent fasting. And mm -hmm. for me, this is also quite a wonderful little cure, a wonderful way of living where pretty much since then, since about August of 2018, I do a 16-8 intermittent fasting. I just, I stop at night at this time and I start again in the morning and I'm not dilettant about it. I mean, if something happens or you're out at night and you're at dinner or a later event, or when you wake up in the morning and you're starving, I don't tell myself, oh no, don't eat because it doesn't work for me that way. Mm. But I do a 16, eight. And I really, I just love that because mm. I just love the feeling of, I wake up in the morning and I'm not even hungry yet. I can go out and walk and do all these things for a couple hours before I even eat. And I think that really helped my body to burn off more fat help my body to just kind of get more into a balance. I'm really, now I'm balanced because now I've had the weight off since um, 18, since 2018, I was done. And it took me 18 months, 18 months to lose 120 pounds. Wow. That's how long okay. it took me. And I've kept it all off now. I've kept it all off all these years. Yeah. And I started studying. I started studying. I started taking, you know, all these different courses on, on nutrition. I have the plant-based nutrition course from T. Colin Campbell, E. Cornell course. Mm -hmm. I took all um, other courses like the science of exercise and um, the science of well-being, which is a beautiful course from Yale University, um, behavior modification. I have holistic, holistic coaching, you know, all these different certificates and courses that I've taken just because that's what I want to do. I want to show people and have the words, right? Have the, have the means and the vocabulary and the words and be able to show them how they can do it and explain to them why it's not working for them. So that's mm -hmm. what I do now. Now, since January, I'm working with a, a great new group, uh, quite innovative uh, coaching platform that you know of. It's called Terra Health Coaching. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's an app, you can fill out an app and then get a discovery call and find a lifestyle medicine based plant based coach. And you know, mm -hmm. you can, you can figure out, is this a lifestyle for me? And we all of us coaches, you don't have to be a vegan, you don't even have mm -hmm. to be plant based. But when you come to us, we're going to kind of show you, can we try it for a month? Can we just mm -hmm. let's change some of your diet? Can you just maybe get one meal a week? I mean, each person is different. Can you just, let's look at what you like to eat. Let's just switch this. Let's just switch a meal. But I've had just any conversation pretty much I have with anyone, even walking outside for a walk and I meet someone and turn around and walk with them. You can change people's minds really easily because I'm not pushing anything. I'm not telling you you gotta be hundred percent anything. If you wanna drink coffee, drink coffee. If you don't wanna eliminate sugar, don't eliminate sugar. I can just tell you why it's better if you do. That's another thing. I have no table sugar. I stopped that in August of 2018. Haven't had a drop of white table sugar anymore, right? Mm -hmm. I don't use sweeteners like that. I use fruit instead. Salt, I don't cook with salt. I'm one of those salt, oil, sugar. I'm free of all of those, SOS free. That's how I live. Other people, if they don't want to, I'm not gonna force them to. If you like coffee and you wanna put sugar in your coffee, go ahead. It's a few calories of your day. You have to look at your whole life of food. You're having 21 meals this week. If you have one meal that has a little bit of sugar, it's okay. Or one you went out for one meal, had a little oil, it's gonna be okay. You know, mm -hmm. it's a whole trajectory of all the food that you're eating. It's not one meal. If you start looking at it that way, it's just like you're going back in the mentality of the diet mentality, right? I've got to count all my food and let, where's my macros and no, I need this. And I don't even put anything on chronometer or all these pay, you know, places that you can download. I've done it a couple of times just to see, am I getting all my nutrients? You know, you knock it out of the park if you're a whole food plant-based, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, because well, that's, you that, that's what you're eating. Of foods, yeah. Right. If you're eating a variety of food, if you're doing mm -hmm. it right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Dr. Lloyd, if you're, if you're cognizant of trying to get all those nutrients and a variety, a wide right. variety. Yeah. And, and so the question comes to speaking of variety and foods, mm -hmm. what do you eat in a, in a typical day? What is on your plate? Yeah. Right. Um, well, I'm a person, just my lifestyle, my personality. I like variety variety and everything. Like I'm not someone who can like wear a black shirt every day. I can't do it. I, you know, I need variety. 
So um, I will tell you pretty much breakfast has always been now, it's some form of oatmeal, some form of oats. It might be hot oatmeal in the winters. It might be overnight oats. I might've made some oatmeal cookies made with mm -hmm. oatmeals, bananas, you know, dates, maybe peanut butter or peanut butter powder. And I'll have a few of those. I might have a muffin, you know, that has oats in it. Some oats are somewhere in that. I might even have them raw as a muesli. I mix a muesli up and it has, you know, dried fruits, oats, seeds, nuts. That's my breakfasts. Um, I eat a lot of fruit for snacks. I drink a lot of water and I drink a lot of green tea. Green tea and mm -hmm. just any kind of green tea. I've got must have 12 in my cupboard and mm -hmm. like hibiscus and different herbal things like that. Hibiscus, mint, stuff like that. I love I don't drink coffee, just never have liked the flavor of it. I just never liked that bitterness. And um, lunches are usually like some big salad. Just, I usually have a huge salad and put beans in it maybe, maybe um, tofu in it, air fried tofu, potatoes in it. I, you know, it's kind of like a loaded salad. It's not just vegetables because that's not going to sustain me. And then I might have more fruit or if it's hot weather, I might have a smoothie, you know, make a smoothie with more fruit, of course. And dinners are usually another starch. I like to eat baked potatoes a lot. I mean, my favorite food is like, I can eat it every day, baked potato with hummus on top and steamed broccoli. I mean, you know, you can't get better than that. I tell friends, this is one of the things I say. I said, listen, if you really think you're hungry, eat a potato, eat a baked potato. That's it. I've talked to clients. I've talked to friends. They're like, yeah, but I get so hungry. I'm like, go in your kitchen, put a potato in the microwave, take it out, slice it open put mustard on it, eat it, put salsa, eat it. It's quite, it's quick. It's simple. You don't have to cook anything. You don't have to make anything extra. And I'm like, in 30 minutes, you will be so full. You can't think of putting more food in your mouth. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's just true. That's what a Very potato exciting. is. Yeah. It's, it, it's the most satiating food. We know that we know that from studies. Yeah. We yeah. know that, that it's the most satiating food. So Very yeah, good. but that's, that's pretty much my food. And like I said, I do intermittent fasting. So I'm pretty much done with food by six, six thirty at night. And I don't eat again till 10 in the morning. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And so now, and you were also in your fifties when this occurred. So it's not like you're a younger person. And, but so, you know, no. that's the thing we always hear is like, can this help me in menopause? Older? Yeah. You hear Absolutely. about this. Yeah. Um, I began this when I was think I was about, I was 53. I'm 58 now. I'll be 59 mm -hmm. in November and went through menopause and everything through this. And still I lost all the weight. I have a 34 inch waist, used to be 48 inches. Now it's 34. Wow. Yeah, wow. it's just, you know, you you lose all that weight. And I just, I'm full of energy and full of life and yeah. full of excitement just to help anybody who wants to change, change because I know it's possible for anyone. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I have, you know, an, another question, I guess it beyond the fact that yeah. you reversed really serious chronic diseases, high blood pressure, diabetes, you lost a significant amount of weight, you've lost a, a whole person. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you've kept it off and you're happy and feeling well and energy. But I want to kind of just go back to when you had mentioned the depression, because I think a lot of that is not spoken of enough in our circles, right? We always speak of the physical illness, but we never speak of mental health as much as we should. I'm sure yeah. there are conversations and the periphery, but not really front and center. Mm -hmm. So can you walk us through how you started feeling better mentally that to the point that you're like, you know, I don't want to be on medications for the depression, or I'm not feeling, you know, um, the moods and the, the lack of um, uh, good feelings or joy anymore. Mm -hmm. Like what, what was going on in your mind? And like, how did that transition occur for you? Yeah, right. I mean, you know, when you're sick, life is very different when you're ill. And I believe diabetes is a really, maybe one of the hardest diseases you can have. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, you're following everything a doctor tells you to do. And right. you just don't know why it's not working. Or I know people who have a blood glucose monitor and they'll take their blood sugar and they're like, these things don't work. I just can't believe why would my number be this high when I wake up in the morning, I haven't had food for all these hours. And I think there's just this whole thing about the system where you go to a diabetes doctor, they give you a prescription, they tell you what to do, and then the, the, the conversation stops. No one really, no doctor in seven minute visit has time to explain to you why your body's reacting the way it's reacting and your body doesn't even need to have diabetes. No one, I never heard that ever until I met Dr. Kambata and Robbie Barbero. I never even heard it. 
And now I know it's for sure. Now I know it's true. Now I know it happens. Now I know it can happen. I've just talked to and met so many people who've done it themselves. And the depression part of it, it does come from that mental thought of, why am I not being able to do this? I'm, I'm an intelligent person. I'm old enough to understand these things. Why, why can't I fix my own body? You start to feel that way. Like, why can't I change it? And then there's the other aspects. Of course, I'm obese. I can't lose the weight. Even I try yo-yo dieting, gain it all back. But then you see somebody else who's achieved it. So then you start comparing yourself, which is the worst thing to do. We can't ever compare mm -hmm. ourselves to anyone, but we all do it. And especially women, we're terrible at this. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the depression part of it, it also came from, like I mentioned, and I will, I, will, I will take it as one of those transitions when you're aging. I turned 50 and I looked at my life. I was going to become an empty nester. My children were leaving home, but not home. They were leaving the country I was in. They were coming back to live in America. I have two sons. Mm -hmm. They're both doctors. They were coming to live in America, and I'm still there in Egypt. My marriage wasn't the best at this point. Uh, we weren't happy. I had just lived through the two years of the revolution. I lived through the uh -huh. 2011. I was in Egypt during that revolution, which put a whole tailspin on the society, on the community. Wow. It was very eye-opening just to see people could change overnight, their thoughts, the trajectory, the government. It was very, very interesting, but that also put problems into the way I felt about the country, the way my children, they didn't want to live there or practice there. They wanted to go and live in America and practice there. We're problems, problems with my, in my, in my marriage. Mm -hmm. So just so many things all together came together. And I just started thinking, how can I, why would I want to live? like this. And you know, you're on one medication now. And I told myself, okay, I'm on all this medicine. And now he's put me on something for the depression. What's next? Something mm -hmm. else for depression or, or what, what am I going to do? Start to go to a psychiatrist, psychologist, but I'm somebody I don't really, it's just my personality. I just don't know that a stranger can help me in that way, talking to me because they don't even know me. They just want to give me medications, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. psychiatrists. That's what they're supposed to do, make you feel better. But the best way is to give you a medicine to help you. I just don't think that's true. I think that we have to somehow find in ourselves the, the, the courage to talk about our feelings. And that happened for me, that, that I can actually say that happened for me. When I started on this journey and I learned more about how I could be healthy by myself and I started losing the weight and I just started finding this is perfect for me. This is working for me. I have to spread it everywhere, everybody I meet, because everyone in my family is obese. I went to a family reunion in 2019, and I was the smallest person there, and I weighed 215 pounds. Wow. Yeah. So then as I started talking, I also started opening up to like relatives I hadn't saw for a while, and I just felt be vulnerable and do it. And I opened up and talked about where I wasn't happy in my life. And I really wanted to change just getting their feedback and talking to them. And it made me feel better. It really does. It really makes you feel better. If you can really open up, find somebody you can be vulnerable with, with find someone that you can actually have a conversation with. And I really hope, I hope, and I pray that everyone has someone like that in their life. They can do it. Uh, you know, even if it's, you know, a family member, or is it a best friend, or is it some friend that used to be a really good friend and they're not a friend anymore? call them up and start your friendship back. If you're some, you know, you can trust that person. That's what you need. Someone you can really be vulnerable with and they will respect anything you say and not judge you. That's what we need. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where I did it myself and I found all these things out myself. So now that's where I stand now in my life. I judge nobody for anything. They talk to me about anything personal, anything in their life. And I try to help them figure out how can I achieve my goal? How can I find that happiness? That's what I want because what else is life for? Mm -hmm. I mean, we should all be walking around and living like I am. Mm -hmm. That's my, that's what I believe. We should all be this happy. I mean, you wake up happy. You wake up smiling. You wake up with energy, no medications, no pain in your body. And I'm 58 years old. Mm -hmm. Everybody should do this. Everybody can do this. And if you have problems with it, find somebody who can help you find a plant-based doctor. There's plant-based coaches. Now that's what I am. I'm working in an organization that that's what we do and just get somebody to help you walk your life through because your life is not my life. The way I did it is my way, but maybe you've heard something here and it's like, I'd like to try that. That's a good point. You know, 
And it's hard because I'm not telling anybody go off medications on your own. Oh, of course not. Of course not, Dr. Dr. Lloyd. I would never tell anybody go off your medication on your own. Mm-hmm. I was just kind of stuck in a situation where the doctor was not going to help me. And I had no support around me. Nobody else was doing this at that time. I know a lot of things have changed now just in these last five years where there are a lot more uh, vegans living all over, plant-based people living all over in every country, more nutritionists, more doctors, more people are recognizing it. There's so many amazing doctors with so many books out on every subject, Fiber Fueled by Dr. Will Voltovich, you know, even Mastering Diabetes. I mean, any book, you know, you can go find a book by one of the experts and read it on your own figure out, is this gonna work for me? And then I know all of these doctors, they're all just incredible. If you read their book and you go on their website, you can even get a call with them. They'll do a 15 minute call with you. You know, even if you just wanna say, oh my God, I just learned so much and how do I do this? And I'm just confused and, and, and this was great information, but how do I do it? They'll talk you through it. Or a lot of them, they have coaching programs. So it's just, it's just, it's just anyone can do it if, if you want to, right? You have to have a why. I had a why. I didn't want to live that way any longer. And I think a lot of people have it. I do. I really do. I think a lot of people, after you've been ill for so long, or maybe you've had surgeries, all these medications, you just, you can't move. You're in pain. That's your why. That's your why. But they just don't know what to do. They think it's just common, right? Even like diabetes, like this doctor was telling me, it's genetic. It's genetic. Put you on insulin and, you know, and, and it is true, I will say part of it is, is genetic. We all know that, right? We know a part of being diabetic, it is genetic. My mother's family, they have diabetes in their family. Well, you have a, maybe a, have a, a predisposition, but it a predisposition, does not mean you will yeah, be it, genetic. Yeah, yeah. does but not then, mean that you will be diabetic, absolutely. Right, right. Yeah, because I've got a brother who isn't and I've got a brother who is, you know? Mm-hmm. And, you know, but then the brother who isn't is not overweight. The brother who is, mm-hmm. is overweight, and you know, with heart problems now. So. Yeah. It's just so many things that they're factors. They're just all factors in our life. And that's why I just love lifestyle medicine. I just love lifestyle medicine and the six pillars of lifestyle medicine. And that's what I'm coaching in now. You know, you you coach, you go through all of the different pillars of it to try to find out, well, you know, if you've got your diet down, right. And maybe you're moving and exercising, but you sleep three hours a night, you've got insomnia. None of the other things are going to really matter because all the hormones in your body, you're going to take over and you're not going to, you're not going to be healthy. You're not going to have energy, or maybe you're eating plant-based and you're really doing a good job. And I can look at your food diary, but your sleep is off. So then Mm -hmm. when we go back and we look at your food diary, we're looking, there's a lot more fat going in there because you want some of those comfort foods because your body is awake all those hours. You're awake 21 hours out of the day. Mm -hmm. You're only sleeping three hours out of the day. It doesn't work that way. Your body just can't handle that for a significant amount of time, something's going to happen. You know, you're going to crash somewhere. Something's going to happen. Some, something's going to, you know, disrupt inside your balance of your body. So I just find it fascinating and I love it. I love meeting people and talking to people and helping them realize they can just be wonderful, have a wonderful life, full of energy and and just off medications as much as we can. Once again, Dr. Mm -hmm. Loy, I'm not going to say we can't go off every medication. If you have something, you know, some thyroid problem or anything like this, you can't go off it, but we can significantly lower it Mm -hmm. so that you don't feel like my life is surrounded by medication and doctors and pharmacies Mm -hmm. and laboratories. And yeah. Well, and speaking of doctors, you said both your boys are doctors. Uh, do they use or prescribe a plant-based diet? Where are they at in their journey? Um, well, no, I, I live with one son. He's a dentist. And mm. since I've been living with him, he is more plant-based because he eats the food that I have in the house. Mm-hmm. And he has realized on his own, when he moves away from the food that I fed him and eats fried food outside or cheese outside, he will not feel well. He knows Mm -hmm. what's the best for him. But once again, you're in your thirties and you want to have friends and you want to be invited to things and you, 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 you'll you'll eat the food that's around you and you'll enjoy the celebrations and you figure I'm young, I can handle it. Mm -hmm. But then year by year, he's finding it out that, yeah, maybe not. And, you know, he, he kind of has the body structure of me, the hormones of me, and he's, he can gain weight quickly. So yeah, he, he, but he likes it too. He likes the plant-based food. He likes the way it makes him feel. He likes the overnight oats. He likes pasta with lentils instead of meat. My other son is in a surgical resident at um, Cleveland, uh, Cleveland, Cleveland clinic. And um, he's married and they have a couple mm-hmm. girls. 
And mm -hmm. they themselves have tried different ways because he's been up and down and his wife was up and down with weight and, you know, having children and all. But yeah, they've even told me that because I stay with them and they see the way I eat and they're intrigued by it and they, you know, learn a lot about, well, what can we eat instead? So little by little, uh, you know, I don't push anybody. I just, when I'm with you and you're eating that and I'm eating this and, you know, mm -hmm. it's okay. I don't push it, but what I do is promote it, right? I promote yeah. it with my own being. I promote it right. with every choice I make. When I sit at a table with all of you at a meal and you watch me create this at Olive Garden, I can eat this and it's beautiful and fantastic and it doesn't have the oil or the fat or the calories that your food does. They get a glimpse that you can really do this anywhere. You can do it anywhere. It's just food choices. You know, it's a food mm -hmm. choice. That's mm -hmm. all it is. That's just it the is. way I look at it. It's just it all choices. And I realize it's not an easy thing. It's not easy because people are ingrained in their habits and mm -hmm. you know, a lot of food can be pleasure and food is celebration and food is everywhere around you. Yeah. But we, we just really have to find a new way. And I know it's possible because we have amazing plant-based cooks and chefs out there, home cooks. You can just go and find any recipe you want oh. plant-based, make it plant-based. So it's amazing. that part's not hard anymore in 2022. I don't right. think there's that excuse anywhere, you know, that, right. and even any, and, and then if you don't like to cook, there are all kinds of places that deliver food. You know, you can get yeah. a meal delivery service and all. there's so many different places that do that. So right. that's not the excuse. That's not an excuse anymore, but still there is people just like, but this is hard. I don't mm -hmm. have any support or I want to do it, but I'm raising children and they don't mm -hmm. need to do this. So mm -hmm. it's really good to talk to somebody who can help you. And there's so many, it's just become more popular. We know that just through the trajectory mm -hmm. of looking at the years of being plant-based. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this five years and every year there's more people in the country doing it. Every year there's mm -hmm. more books being written, seminars being given, foods coming out, right? All these different plant-based alternatives and things like that. Restaurants opening that are only plant-based or mm -hmm. have plant-based uh, version on their menu that anyone can go anywhere. And you know, you just have to learn to do it, learn to navigate around the restaurant menus, learn to navigate your life, really learn a new, it's just learning a new way to live. It really mm -hmm. is. Learning well, a it's new way taking, to live. it's taking ownership of the vessel that you've been given. Right. Yeah. And so, and the, the beautiful part is, um, is that you're having fun living your life. And I, you know, I, I think, you know, I always remind people that you were given this journey and this story. And so you, you know, you had to go through, I think the suffering to understand that, to have compassion for that. So oh, yeah. I feel like that's, that adds to your coaching skill set because mm -hmm. you've lived this and now you can actually comprehend what's oh, right. Yeah. Suffering. And with the coaching program, I'm with Terra Health Coaching. I have yeah. a sustainable weight, to, sustainable weight management course. So anyone who wants that, nice. because it is hard to manage the weight loss. I know that I've been through it. I've yo-yoed up and down my whole life, but talking to someone now, because I can empathize with anything you want to tell me, I understand everything you want to tell me, whether it's social, whether it's physical, whether it's emotional, whatever feeling you're going through, I've been through, right? Mm -hmm. So I can really see you where you are and then try to help you well, what's a plan we can move forward? What's one little thing we can change that's going to get you where you want to go? Because where you want to go might not be where I want to go, right? But it's right. where you want to go. That's all I want for you. I want you right. to go where you want to go and be the happiest person you can be. And if you're not happy carrying an extra 50 pounds of weight, let's get it off and live the rest of our life without gaining it back. And there's a lot of stuff you can do. There's a lot of nuances and a lot of things that you can teach people the things they've never maybe heard before, things they've mm -hmm. never thought of before. Like for instance, I'm even on the National Weight Control Registry here in America, and I'm on an international weight control registry also, where all the people in the group, they study us because if you've lost 30 pounds and kept it off for a year, they study and they do huge surveys to find out what are you guys doing that's keeping the weight off when everybody else is such, having a hard time. Mm -hmm. So they really try to get you know, just a lot of different people who lost the weight, kept it off. What are you individually doing? And then they're graphing that to try to find out, okay, does a plant base, does that work? Calorie density work? Because we all know exercise, it's never going to make you lose weight or there'd be nobody overweight at the gym anymore. I mean, you know, if, if you lost the weight, it just, people don't, right. people, people don't get it. And if somebody doesn't believe that, when I say that, I don't care if you don't believe me, 
get the new book called Burn. Read it. Mm-hmm. It talks all about all about how many calories we actually really need to burn, what our body actually is really doing every day. And you will be very pleasantly surprised that you haven't done anything wrong. <laughs> you know, you haven't done anything wrong. If you love right. to go to the gym or you love to run or bike or whatever, and you think you're burning three or three or 4,000 calories, it's just not true. You're just not burning that much calories to go out and have a celebratory pizza because you burned some calories at the gym. You can't, it doesn't work that way. What it does is exercise is great for our soul. It's great for our soul. It makes us feel happy and energetic and toned. And, you know, it makes you feel, makes you feel, uh, I know it gives me more energy. I know it makes me feel if I'm out and I'm healthy and I'm feeling more, you know, stronger, I'm not going to come home and have a fried fried food. I'm just, I'm not going to put it in my body, I guess is what I want to say. You just kind of feel like I feel really good. Why would I then put junk food in my body or why would I stop at McDonald's? You know, why, mm-hmm. why would I want to do it? It's just that well, mindset, that shift. There's many people who have great intentions and still struggle. So that's where oh, yeah. someone like yourself would be super helpful with the coaching and the Terra Health coaching is great. We certainly worked mm-hmm. with them. Um, and so, but I know I've kept you too. You're an hour here. Okay. And I, I okay. feel, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to keep you. you I have will so also, much. Um, if I can mention one other place people can find me, I have an Instagram account called Plantrified 101, where basically okay. it's just myself as a health coach. I go in and I just give you fast little tips. There's about 90 tips there that if anyone incorporated these little tips in their life, you'd be pretty healthy. It goes into, you know, drink water, drink water, exercise, move, smile, be happy, be grateful. Right just small little things for lifestyle medicine, but it's just, you know, each little one is just a little picture and a little comment. And if you really ingrained that and took those things into your life, you would really find some changes quickly. It's a small habits, but it's a, it's consistent. Absolutely. So we'll put that link in the the show notes. We'll make sure that um, we do that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so, but thank you for my goodness, you, you definitely, if, if everyone doesn't believe that she does, she, she has the energy, then you're just not been listening. Um, but so very, very wonderful story. And I'm excited for anyone who gets to work with you and you can help them along in their journey. Cause it, you, you have a, a vast knowledge skill set and it's, it's fantastic. So I, I wish you well. And thank you again so much thank for sharing you. your story with us today. Thank you so much for showing the people all these stories. I think it's amazing that, you know, one story can reach the world because that person tells another person and we all have our own story and yeah, yeah. But yeah, Yeah. I would just love to help anybody that I can. That's kind of my mission. That's kind of where I am in my journey. I just, I love it. It makes me happy. Absolutely. It's, it's a, I call it veggie crack. You, you eat vegetables, yep. I get a dopamine hit and we're hooked. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And All I right. do appreciate you so much, Dr. Lori. Thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoyed that video. Before you go though, please hit the subscribe and alert buttons. So you don't miss out on any of the amazing content we're working so hard to provide you. We upload a new episode of health and Mora with Dr. Lori Marbus every Friday. Now, if you'd rather listen to the podcast, you can find us on all the major platforms such as iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, and even Spotify. If you're looking for amazing resources to help you start and sustain a plant-based diet, exercise, recipes, or anything wellness, we got you covered there too. Because at Mora, we actually provide physician-led support groups to help people live happier, healthier lives free of metabolic disease. Don't forget to check out our website at mora.com and thanks again for watching.